Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode <laughs> 60. Nine. Let's, call it, let's call it 69. Why not? Ooh. Let's get some needless fun and banter into this shit. Yeah, it's some needless fun and banter here. That's what we need. Well, because this is basically just a shitty blog, you know? <laughs> just but shit. it's it's even it's even lazier because like because we don't even write it down. We don't do any research. We just we uh, some crap. We should it should be about something. We should make this like a you know like a thing that we do research on and spend time doing. We can do one episode like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want all of the episodes. All of them. We could, we, should, we could do a special murder episode or something. You, you, guys, no, 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 no. you guys tried to write one conservative joke a week and that didn't fly. <laughs> yeah, that didn't even work. We couldn't even do one conservative joke a week. Yeah, Sean, you're right. It lasted about two weeks. It lasted two <laughs> weeks. It lasted no week. No, you half ass wrote one and I didn't write any. <laughs> no, I don't know. It didn't go great. So you're sucking on a northern queen pop this is a northern queen pop we're gonna eat it and then we'll talk about it at the end of the episode it looks pretty good so this week mm -hmm. has happened have you gone to any local bistros and supported local oh, that's good oh. <laughs> have you celebrated the reopening of restaurants no because the restaurant i work at didn't reopen <laughs> why not because of all the mexican things <laughs> no not because of that'd, the be, that'd be funny if there was some racist reopening like okay everybody ethnic <laughs> stuff is stage three <laughs> <laughs> hamburgers stage one yeah, bps you're open tomorrow <laughs> Trey carnalis wait till april i think that like the independent small restaurants are actually being quite careful because i've heard some of the chains not so much like i so i read some of their Somebody went to Canadian Brew House and it was like COVID wasn't even happening. Like people were everywhere. Everyone's moving around tables and like just partying. <laughs> yeah. It's the spirit of the young and white, you know? <laughs> it's just the spirit of people being young and white and feeling good about life and fuck everybody and fuck my neighbor. Young and white and free with their and masks on. Like, yep. It doesn't matter. I haven't gone out anywhere. I'm, you know, like what, what isn't allowed to, I saw like a thing on Facebook today. Like I support dance studios, reopen dance studios now. And oh I'm just like, how, like every, not person, opening gyms and stuff. every person has this pet project where there's one thing in their life that's pissing them off. That isn't reopening for us. It's comedy clubs because we can't wait to, for them to reopen so we can get back in there and get our $75 to fucking feed <laughs> for an American. I oh, reopen comedy club so that I can get $60 to fucking do a tight 13, keep it clean in front of Rob Schneider. <laughs> Please open them now. Don't you get it? Jason Kenny, you're ruining my MC life. I think comedy might be dead. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's alive and well, Kathleen. This podcast is living proof. That's true. There's still laughs out there. This cake pop is delicious. Oh my god. Is that? <laughs> I love when you can't taste the weed. That's the best kind of high to get because then it tricks your brain. Your brain's like, we're not getting high. When something One tastes time... like weed or mushrooms, you don't get as high because your brain's like, uh oh, something's coming down my pipe here. When your, brain, when your brain doesn't taste it it's like oh i just had cake and then it's like what the fuck <laughs> that cake was good that happened to me once like um the first time i was down in california i was living with my mom's friend and she lived in like anaheim and my boyfriend at the time came to visit and i just did a show at the la jolla comedy store an extravaganza and oh fun 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 and like <laughs> i got paid in in edibles and they gave me a hundred dollars so that i would drive a comic from san diego to la even though i'm like yeah but i live in anaheim and they're like well here's a hundred dollars just drive him to and from and then i don't want to say his name because he was really weird like he he would like look at me and he would go like this and he'd go like this Why like he was joking that? look at jim's face 
he was trying, <laughs> he was an odd duck and he was joking and stuff and he was actually quite funny and then he ate four of the muffins and like was passed out how many on the drive back how much how much money was he getting to do the show that they get had a hundred dollars for you to drive him home like he must have been getting a grand to do that show I don't know if he was even getting that much. I think they were being nice to me because I knew the guy that was running the show. But uh, yeah, no, and so anyway, so I had these edibles and my boyfriend at the time came to visit me and he was like, oh, can I have one of these? And I was like, sure. So he ate one. And then like 10 minutes later, he went off to do something and he comes back. He ended up eating like three of them because he kept on saying, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. Perfect. And then he was so high. He was so high. We went to downtown Disney. We couldn't afford to go into Disneyland. We went to downtown Disney and bought these like brownies with Oreos all over them. And then we were eating the brownie and then we're walking around the gift store. And I was like, whoa, everything's weird. I'm like, I think they're putting weed in the brownies at Disneyland. And he's like, no, we ate a whole bunch of edibles. And I was like, oh, because that was like my first experience with edibles. Oh, and then my brother, sorry. And then my brother came the next week and he had some. And we went to SeaWorld and he was high as a kite at SeaWorld, which was very weird. Jesus Christ. Well, now everything's opening up, Kathleen. The whole world's opening back up and you're still stuck in your fucking house. You could be at Kaylee's right now having some garlics, garlic wings, supporting I mean, local. That's like the one benefit of this is I haven't gone out and had a $200 night at the bar anytime soon. <laughs> like I haven't. And like going to the liquor store is like you're gonna spend like forty, maybe fifty bucks instead of like two hundred dollars going out. <laughs> right. I haven't, so, you're right. I haven't seen a receipt where I was like, "Whoa!" in a while. Yeah. In There's been a, a lot of those receipts. When it's Adam and I go out, it is very dangerous because we can't, like, we can't stop and we can't like no. not buy everyone drinks. And then we're like, "Wait, we don't have three hundred dollars." Yeah. And it's like, well, I have the money. It's like, yeah, you have the money now. Like that's, you know, that's the problem with me being like such a short sighted person is that I'm like, well, no, I mean, we can spend 180 bucks here on wings and booze because I've got 800. Yeah. Yeah. It's way less than 800. You know? <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, I mean, but she... there's so many other things you have to get. Yeah. You <laughs> idiot. Well, it's, it's like, I don't know uh i i've just been like i should have been like saving my money this whole time <laughs> like we should be in a really great financial position and instead i'm not <laughs> i'm still the same place i was before like we should have had all this time to like spend to save our money and stuff like i didn't pay my mortgage all last summer because there was like a program and they skipped mortgage payments for six months and did i save any of that extra money hell no <laughs> hell no she goes <laughs> I went online shopping. So That's bad. The problem, right, is online shopping took over from that sort of that hit that that hit that we got from going to a restaurant and just having an appetizer and an entree and a dessert and four more drinks than we thought we were going to and talking yeah. about politics and somebody falls over and we all laugh and a fat guy puts parmesan cheese all over the fucking place. <laughs> Those nights are gone, and now we have to just sit at home and be like, I, "Why don't I have roller skates?" <laughs> I should get some roller skates. How come I don't even have any roller skates. <laughs> I've always wanted roller skates. Why do I? And food delivery. Food delivery is the devil. Food delivery is the devil, and we just we love contributing to a system that, you know, destroys us, right? Like every single review you read from a skip the dishes driver is like either written by skip the dishes and it's five star <laughs> or it's one or two stars. And people are like, even people that are the people who write good reviews, they're like, Hey, I like working for skip the dishes. It's a great job. I'm really enjoying it. Works out to about eight or $9 an hour minus gas and wear and tear, but you oh get to God. meet people. You get to wave at dogs through a window and I'm having a blast. And you're like, who is that fucking person that is like, you know, four stars, four stars. You just said you make $8 an hour, you fucking idiot. That's someone who's bored and doesn't need the money and just wanted to get out and do something. That's somebody that's not like, doesn't need the money. But if you need the money, that's, that's $8 an hour. That's gross. 
but that's what billionaires found out about us is that we sit in, we sit in like the average person will sit and gripe about billionaires on fucking podcasts and in blogs and in conversation till they're blue in the fucking face. And then when they're done talking about how much they hate billionaires, they go immediately onto the internet and contribute to the wealth of many billionaires. <laughs> like that's all we do. We complain yeah. about billionaires and fucking fucking fuck you you fucking rich cocksucker and then we're like i wouldn't mind some indian tonight yes exactly. order it off skip the dishes and then we'll go online get something off amazon prime we'll watch a movie you know like we just that's all we do is so that's well, what I, you nurse figured new, out about us let them well, there's a new document there's a new documentary corporation too like the second there was the corporation and, and it's like you watch that movie and you're like I don't care what side of the political spectrum you're on. If you don't make a billion dollars and you're not furious at the billionaires, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I don't care if you supported Trump or whatever. I don't care. Like, it, we need to stop being against each other, like, conservative and liberal. And we need to all be anti-billionaire. <laughs> we all need to get there. I think what needs to happen is we need to spend the next six months with all the, with all the big chains closed and the mom and pops open. You that know, would be hilarious. That has to be the political. But then, but then you have the problem. Hey. But then you have the problem with all, all those people that work at those places, the people that aren't millionaires. Now Somebody get fucked. Somebody's got to get fucked. <laughs> Let those, you know what I mean? Like, those, they'll find other stuff. They're talented. You know, they're talented people. Put the <laughs> fish in the cooler. Put them on Serb. Fuck it. Let them sit around for a while. You know? Yeah, they should. They should close they down this McDonald's. They had to work their asses off at McDonald's and Walmart and Ikea for fucking minimum wage. They got like a hero bonus for two weeks. They couldn't go on CERB. So the next six months to a year should be every fucking major chain that was open while everything else was closed is now closed. All their employees go on CERB and get to kick back for a fucking year. And then all the mom and pops take over and you get shawarma and a weird looking sweater from Viv's. <laughs> or the government shouldn't have to pay them serve they should have to pay their employees serve because they've got so much money yeah i mean i don't know if this is a workable plan i it, i mean if in in the dictator world that i live in remember i'm always going to be the nicest dictator right i'm going to be really nice to regular people i'm going to be a total cunt to billionaires i, I don't know what we're gonna i mean if if edmonton can build a gondola Mm. You know, I'm going to do that. Do this. We can. We're going to build. There's good. I, do you like gondolas? I yes, I do. I like gondolas. They're very fun. I've only gone skiing a few times, and that's always the best part of skiing is the chairlift. Yeah. <laughs> I, and then I love the gondolas and Jasper and Bam. Those are the best. They're kind of scary. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I'm scared best. of. I'm scared of heights. Um, okay. Well, yeah. If you're a giant uh, pussy, they're scary. They <laughs> You're, you tell, you're telling me you've been on gondolas and been like, oh, this is a breeze and you're fucking leaning out the window. Yahoo. Or are you, are you, you're not scared at all that you're going to die? No. Holy shit. Well, I, maybe I, it's because I don't care if that happens, but <laughs> I don't get scared on like rides or heights and stuff. Like, no, I get a little scared at first. Like if, like if I went on, I, I think we were going to go on that stratosphere roller coaster in Vegas, but it was closed or something. I might be scared for a second, but I just don't like, I don't want to do height stuff. Like, cause you have to weigh yourself and tell people how much you weigh. Like, <laughs> that's the worst part. Like, about, that's why I don't want to skydive. <laughs> that's the worst part about like a zip line or something where they're like, here, get him on this one. And then he's a, Oh yeah. And then you're like, no, no. The, what is this for? What is this rated for? Because when you're bigger, people always think you're not as big as you are, right? Until you're super fat. And then people yeah. think you're 900 pounds, even when you're 600, you know? But when you're like 240, people think you're about 210 or something. They don't want to be rude, especially with a girl, right? So they'll be like, oh, let's get her into the one, let's get her into the 175 harness. And you're like, no, 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 no. That's going to tear, <laughs> no, 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 no. tear apart and I'll be cut to pieces in the North Saskatchewan River. <laughs> you know that comic in, um, in Fort McMurray, Ty Brand? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm so one time I was going up there and he messaged me. I can't remember. I think I was going with Celeste Lampa, but uh, he messaged me and he was like, do you want to go on a helicopter ride? Cause I can set it up. I know some guy that has helicopters. I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, I just need you to tell me your weight. Cause they need to know the weight. And I was just like, oh, oh ha, ha ha. And he's like, no, I'm not kidding. And he, so I told him and he's like, so uh, should I add 20 pounds to that? And I was like, yeah. He's like, add 20 pounds to anything a woman says she weighs. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even get to go on the helicopter ride. We never even went. <laughs> I, think just, I think I just wanted to find out how much I weighed. <laughs> you just told him your weight for enough. Hey, uh, oh. hey, get, hey, we're going to a baseball game. I got tickets. I just need to know how old you are. <laughs> What? I'm 37. So should I add 10 years to that? Fucking, and then you get there. No uh, rain out. It's a total rain out. Bye. Oh my god. But now I know That's how old only... you are and how much you weigh, and I can take you down brick by brick. I never wanted to go skiing in junior high when you had the ski trip because I had to rent equipment, and you did tell them how much you weighed. Like, and I was a fat kid. I didn't want to tell this like cute snowboard instructor that I was like. A teen and I was over 200 pounds <laughs> I'm like he, I'm sure he could tell but oh god that was like that gave me such anxiety just thinking about telling somebody how much I had I weighed Ugh. yeah you're right I guess that I guess that is scarier than fucking falling out of a gondola face first <laughs> it is it is and they make you feel like if you lie to them you're gonna die because if you tell them the wrong cool. weight you lie <laughs> you die like, <laughs> welcome to Marvin Mason you lie you die <laughs> We should go on a ski trip. We should go on a ski trip when we finally get our, our sound exchange money when the snow is melted. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't gone skiing in the mountains ever. It's it's fun. I mean, I don't like... I don't, I don't like, like, yeah. It's greasy out there. I don't like to, you know, like I like to stay on my feet. I don't like to fall down or nothing. I'm kind no, of I just want to go up and down. down. That's all you want to do. We got to support. Yeah. We got to support the fucking ski hills. I wonder what's going to happen in the next year with all these mom and pop shops that are like, uh, for a year, I heard everybody talking about how they couldn't wait for us to open. And here we are fucking dead on a Sunday again, just like pre COVID. <laughs> That's the thing is now yeah, you're open. Now you have to, now you have to pay to have your staff there in case you get busy. And then, I mean, at my restaurant, they're like, we have no idea what's happening. You're, you could get called in last minute or we could cut you early and i mean legally you have to be able to work for three hours but like nobody wants to stick around for three hours and do nothing like nobody's going out all these people that wanted to open so badly like it's actually probably going to end up costing them more in the long run yeah i mean that was sort of like <laughs> the idea for the politicians and the health officials in the beginning was like you know, what are we going to do if, we, you know, it, as long as the numbers of people uh, testing positive are going up, people aren't going to want to go out, like whatever the regulations are. The only way you can do it is the Florida model where you just don't test and you, so you don't know. And then the images that we see on television is like a beach party in Florida. We don't see the long-term care facility where everybody's fucking face down with a ventilator in their face. Exactly. And we all want to be at that beach party. Yeah. We all really want to be. So it's there. like, let's go back to the olden days where we did, where scientists were in the fucking corner and we partied until we needed help. And then we ran into a hospital and yelled help. <laughs> no. That's the way we used to live, eating cheeseburgers and fucking getting bacon out in the sun and smoking cigarettes and vaping and drinking our fucking faces off. And then the scientists were like, you should stop. And we were like, fuck you, nerd. <laughs> and, then, and then when we started to feel a pang in our chest, we were like, help, nerd, help. That's See, what I people want to go point. back to. That's exactly what they want to go back to. But I'm finally getting to the point where I'm like, really, how bad is this? I knew a few people that had it. They were sick as a dog, but they didn't die. Like, I had H1N1 when I lived in Toronto, and I was that was the sickest I've ever been, but I didn't die. Why didn't we <laughs> lock down during H1N1? Why I'm are not we, a pussy. But, I didn't die from it. Yeah, 
I'm not a big pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Only pussies died from these pandemics. I'm not afraid of heights and fucking pathogens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of telling people I'm 210 pounds. <laughs> 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 I'm not confirming or denying that. <laughs> oh, you're not that. You're not that. And if you were, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> I'll go you backtrack on that. It wouldn't matter if you were. <laughs> Who cares if you are? So we actually got to go to the dog park today because it's not as cold anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was awesome. So your, your, your mental health is improving? Oh yeah. Like if I go to the dog park, my day improves immensely. Yeah. Just you know. watching them run around would be so cute. And then watching them like snip each other's butts and meet other dogs. It's so cute. That's the great thing about being a girl is you can watch animals do things and it brightens your day. <laughs> you know? I love to watch animal videos. It's not a girl thing. It, it's, pre it's predominantly a female trait to be able to like <laughs> put a thing in front of a cat and then it dances and you go, <laughs> yeah. look at it. Look at him. It is. It's good. And you know, most guys are like, yeah, that's okay. Like, fair enough. That animal isn't, you know, just through sheer instinct is trying to get the rope. I get it. <laughs> it's not anything that doesn't make me happier. You know what I mean? <laughs> what would make you happier? I don't know. Watching. What would make you if you watch something? I Death and dismemberment. A war documentary. A war yeah, documentary. Exactly. Or a comedy club in a dance studio that can finally be fucking free. <laughs> that I can get back to the business of doing a free set on a Wednesday for 15 minutes in front of 10 people. <laughs> set him free. <laughs> That's what I say. Oh, Kathleen froze, thank God. Uh -oh. <laughs> you froze at the worst possible time. That's, always, that's another thing that gives me anxiety. Face face. All you have to do now is just put my actual weight under the picture yep. where my face is frozen, and that'll ruin my life. At, I gotta say, at that point where your face was frozen, you you look too ten. It was like a porn freeze though. Like, you know, those porn, when you're watching porn and it freezes like, uh, and you don't really know what to do. <laughs> you don't know like what that to I do. <laughs> I've never, I don't, how, how bad is your Wi-Fi that your porn is freezing? Uh, I, I, <laughs> Kathleen doesn't buffer, she downloads. I oh, download. No. <laughs> I'm not a buffer, do I look like a bitch that buffers? No. <laughs> I'm just a buffer bitch. <laughs> I get out my DVDs <laughs> that I've had for years because I know the scenes that I like. <laughs> oh, no God. one can look up my search history on my DVDs. <laughs> Sick old DVDs. Yeah, that was, <laughs> but I, I did watch my first, my first experience with porn was like my dad's old beta tapes. Your dad was a beta man. He was a beta male. My uncle Gord was a beta male. My dad <laughs> and was a beta uncles. male back when that man and alpha jerking off to porn on his VCR. <laughs> That's another conservative Our... joke. Write that down. We've got two conservative jokes now. Rush Limbaugh died today. That's a oh, conservative joke. Rush Limbaugh died today. That's I remember watching Rush Limbaugh when I was a kid because he had a show that was like Letterman. Yeah. It was like a Letterman style show. And I was like, oh, what's this? So I would like watch it. Not, I didn't even know what politics were. I didn't know. But he had like this countdown that was like America held hostage. And then there was a countdown clock that had like fucking two years, 900 hours on it. And it was like yeah. until Clinton was out of office. <laughs> what? Like, what is the, what is he talking about? Like, yeah. So I always thought he was... Uh, a pretty fucked up guy. He definitely ushered in. I mean, you know, whatever he would, you know, he, even without rush, things would be exactly where they are now, but. Oh yeah. He definitely, you think that he was a beta max or a VHS man? I don't, I think he was probably beta old school beta male jerking off to fucking real weird seventies pornography, you know? 
the beta males always were like they, they always were like it's a better system it's the better system and all the vhs males would be like you're an idiot no. and it was the better system there must have been like a month there must have been like a deal between vhs and all the video stores at some point because that's really what happened is like you were like oh i like beta whatever i don't care and then all of a sudden you just could not find a beta to save your life at a video rental store so there must have been some kind of deal where they're like let's give blockbuster 10 million dollars to never carry beta again and we just were like okay whatever beta's gone oh my god that's a that's crazy your dad had wait though your dad had porn on beta yeah, he had uh, two or three. Solid. Two or three. Two or Can you three imagine three. like living in that time where you had like two or three porns, and those were your porns forever, until it, the tape got eaten, and then you were like, "Motherfucker, I gotta go buy another porn." Yeah, no, and they they and they were like clearly video. They were like taped off of something else too. Like they were recorded, like they weren't. It wasn't an original movie. It was on. It had been recorded onto a, like a, one of those other, you know, like a secondary. Oh, like a blank. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so like, you know how it would like have the little snow rising, like. <laughs> and then, yes. Boom, and then wham, porn. You're like, whoa, porn out of nowhere. <laughs> there was no credit for anything. It was right in the middle of an orgy, seventies orgy. Oh my god, that was your first porn that you ever saw. Yeah, I think so. I was over at a friend's house watching one with some girls one time, and it was very weird. When I was like 11. Yeah, that would be very weird. You know, a bunch of 11-year-olds or 12-year-olds that were like, oh, this is bizarre. <laughs> I remember being on like a hockey trip with my brother's hockey teams and they were all like trying to get the sisters to go into a room with all the sisters of the hockey player boy because they were watching a porn and we would just like, we were running away. And now I think about it, that's very predatory. <laughs> yeah, kind and of. disgusting. But they were hockey players, so they got away with anything they wanted to do. Imagine if COVID I happened think... in 1989. <laughs> oh, my God. COVID in 89 would have been fucking <laughs> hell. Like, everybody stay home, watch these eight channels. <laughs> yeah. Watch it been... ITV with you, watch ITV or CBC. That's it. You had, you had like, fucking, you would have had, like, eight channels, no, no phone, like, just a landline. Oh my you know, god, like, you're freaked out. Maybe maybe this is where maybe they quarantined us this time because we could entertain ourselves. Because mm. even with H1N1, it was just like shitty cell phones. There was no smart, maybe there was a smartphone or something, but it wasn't like it is now. Like it would have been it would have been rough to get keep yeah. people in. But now it's easy, but they give us food delivery and <laughs> streaming and yes. we'll never go back to work. <laughs> it's, it's real godsend it happened now and not when we were kids, you know. Yeah. I don't know what the long-term effects will be on your dogs or my children. Who cares, you know? Who cares? We'll I was hanging up. out with my friend. Like, she came to drop something off and her kids were there. And kids are, like, exhausting. I was like, there's no way I can have a kid because I'm too tired just standing here listening to them all talk at the same time. They all talk at the same time. They're very cute kids, very well-behaved children. But kids are just exhausting. Because they have so many fucking questions. Oh, my God. Yeah, they want to know a lot. They, you know, and they sometimes they're asking you a question they already have the answer to. And you're like, just tell me the fuck. Just tell it. Oh, they're being assholes like that? No, they're not really assholes. But they're just like, hey, do you know the bone that's the closest to your skin? And you're like, you obviously just watched a video. What it, What is it? <laughs> What's the bone that's closest to your skin? Just fucking tell me. <laughs> I don't know what phone is it? I'm guessing game, you know? <laughs> What's the dumbest question uh, any of your kids have asked? You don't have to identify which one, but like, what's just the question? You're just like, I can't believe you just asked me that question. Well, there is one that I do a joke about where um, when my son saw me like mopping up a bunch of like um, shit water <laughs> in the basement. Oh, yeah. And then he said, Would you drink all that to get your mom back to life? I, he really said that. I still, yeah. Oh really my god! <laughs> what did you say? Uh, what? <laughs> what the? What? Holy crap! 
Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I hope you told that story at, your, at his wedding. <laughs> yeah, I think he was like seven. Oh, seven. man, that's insane. Yeah. I wonder what, like, triggers kids into seeing stuff. Like, they see something about death, right? And where did they see it or hear it or something? Well, and I used to tell them dumb lies and stuff, and then they would like years like <laughs> say what the lie was. Like somebody was like, "Oh, what did your what did your grandma die of?" And then my son was like, "She ate a rotten carrot." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I told." It's like that's what I told him a few years ago it was actually pancreatic cancer. When he was when he was when he was bad carrot when he was five, I said she ate a rotten carrot. He's never eaten a carrot ever again. Oh, he's very he's very finicky about his carrots now. Yeah, that's like that's like you're literally getting to psychologically damage another human. Like that's all part of parenting. <laughs> that's part of the benefits of parenting. Yeah, you're fucking them up a little bit. Like you can totally get your kid to like be terrified of, of one weird thing for the rest of their life, and then they end up on Maury scared of balloons. <laughs> I, I have one. Also, like, you have that- one? I had like a little mole or I have a little mole somewhere on my body. And I remember being young, like a, a kid and asking my mom what would happen if I like ripped it off. And I remember she must have been frustrated. Like, you know, I mean, she turned around and was like, oh, you'll like, you'll, you'll, you'll bleed out. You know, like you'll, you'll bleed to death. <laughs> and so my whole life I've been like, really like, I've been like real careful around this thing. And once, like once I was an adult, I was, I confront, I was like, what? And she's like, oh, I don't remember saying that, but yeah. Why does Jim go down water slides on his stomach? Yeah. Goes down on his side like a just insane. Yeah, he's protects. He really protects that one part of him. I don't understand. But he's no fun at water slides. That's for sure. Yeah. I like Jim, but don't go to the World Water Park with him. He's a fucking yeah. freak. I'm trying to think of like if I had like my something that I was told, but I don't. I don't think that I can remember. All I had was that I used to tell one joke all the time and I didn't understand it, but adults always laugh. So I just told the same joke and then I just laughed along, but I had no idea I, <laughs> why it was funny. <laughs> Can't. What? <laughs> why is that so funny? Oh, well, bye. Bye. <laughs> well, you don't really have to. I, I was listening to this like scientist podcast where they were talking about how children turn out. And they were saying like it's fifty percent genetics and fifty percent environment, uh, but the the fifty percent environment is almost exclusively um, their peers. You, you know, like their friends, their friend group, who they grew up around, what they were exposed to at school or online. Like it's not so much their their parents that raise them don't really have that much of an impact because parents tend to do the same sort of thing, like hey, you're awesome and you can do anything you want, even though you're dumb, you know, like you're so pretty, like parents tend to be the, be nice, but kids, you know, kids get to a certain age and they're like, my parents are lying about me being able to do anything and being smart and beautiful. Like everybody else keeps telling me all the things that are wrong with me. And that's, <laughs> that's what sticks with them. That is true. I do. I think I'm mostly shaped who I am. I am who I am because of who I like was around when I was a kid. Yeah, and you're a bit like your mom and your dad just because you're genetically a bit like them. That's a really flattering face freeze. Don't worry about this face freeze. This is a really flattering one. Yeah. <laughs> you have your mom. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, my head, my new headshot. Oh, I'm like not. trying to pod. I'm trying to podcast like in this corner, and I guess there's it's like dead over here. It's a dead spot. Oh. It's a dead zone. <laughs> Dead zone. I don't want to breathe anymore. How's your other podcast going? Oh, good. I have to do one. <laughs> no, tomorrow probably. Okay. I, I just like, yeah. When I, it feels like nothing's ever going to come back though. It will. Before you know it, like a year from now, you'll be like, fuck, I hated that show. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we stopped doing it this March. <laughs> Why did I want to get back to this? Just some lady like, you're a fucking slut. <laughs> some guy like, brutal. And you're like, why did I miss this? 
like just fucking well, standing on a milk crate for 300 bucks i think it was just like because i felt like i had a purpose at that point <laughs> yeah no definitely now i have no purpose right, yeah. yeah like absolutely yeah like now i'm looking at jobs like i guess i'm i guess i am about 18 dollars an hour that's the kind of yeah thing. when you take comedy away from me i'm up worth about 18 dollars an hour like I, can I think lift, you said about most things. comedians. Yeah, I can lift things. I can move them to places. I can drive. And that's about it. Am I and you know what? I'm... Nope. Have I, have I taken any online courses? Nope. Do I know that computer program? Nope. Have I worked in an office environment? Never. <laughs> Maybe marketing. Like, I guess we could get into marketing, but then we wouldn't know what the fuck we were doing. They would just be like... Hey, I need you to write me a, no. I need you to write me a brand proposal for a fucking Dodge dealership. And I'd be like, can we make it like kind of funny? No, it's supposed to be a, it's a fucking car dealership. Oh, okay. put it on the Google drive in this group. <laughs> I don't know what that you're talking about. <laughs> where, uh, I'm not in that. Hello. Where am I? I can't see myself. <laughs> oh, Kathleen, the new girl's frozen again. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are going to be realtors, remember? We about Zoom. Realtors, tag team realtors. Yeah, we got to work for ourselves. That's the thing. Like, we can't work for other people now. We have to invent something and sell it on Etsy or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fucking, that's a fun dream. We have to invent something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when CIBC calls like, hey, this is your third missed mortgage payment. Uh, are you guys moving out? No, 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 no. I, I'm inventing. Just, I just need to invent something. Can you give me <laughs> some time? Because I am one invention short of making many, uh, of having so much money that you, you will all laugh about this conversation. <laughs> we'll, all, we'll all look back and laugh. Oh, remember when you were three mortgage payments behind you and we were all worried and then you invented that thing that everybody needed? <laughs> Hey, you never know. My dad was an inventor, but he didn't hit the jackpot. <laughs> he, what did he invent? He, did he invent anything cool? He invented, it was actually a pretty good idea. It was like a hockey stick holder. And like, you see things like it now all the time. I don't know what he did. But it was called Stick Boy. And it was just like plastic and you could fit four hockey sticks in and you could carry it out. It was actually a good idea. And my dad like made a prototype. I don't know how many he made. But I know that like years after that, there was like boxes of them in our garage. The only person I knew that invented something and got rich off of it. Um, he did, he got rich off of it because somebody stole, they stole his idea. He had a, he, this was back in the oh. 80s and he had an idea for a fax machine in a car. What? Yeah. So he I, had, I say that nowadays with like smartphones. I'm like, we can't, we don't even have that now. So he presented the idea of a fax machine in a car to like, I don't know, Nokia or some fucking Samsung or some shit. And um, they rejected it. They said, no, it's okay. And then they developed their own. And then they were able to prove, they were able to prove in court that they, you know, this is when we gave it to them and this is when they started developing it and this is when it hit the market and it's exactly like ours. And they got a few million bucks out of that. That's the only person Whoa. I know invented something and got loaded out of it. Wow. It's always the simplest stuff that like, you know, the girl that invented Spanx, I think she's a billionaire now. <laughs> tight underwear, that's all it is. She's <laughs> just tight underwear. Yeah, you just have to come up with a good idea. The 21st century. That's all we need. It's a 21st century corset. Like it's not, you know, it's been around. That's all it is. It's been around fucking since cave people were like, wrote me up, genius. Ah, you know, like. <laughs> I love that you think a cave person was called Gene. <laughs> Gene. Even the women were called Gene back then. Do you think that they have like our kind of names? Or I thought like their names would be like Gork and like. Yeah, what would a caveman name be? Names I think they. <laughs> Like, I can't think of Sean and Jim the cavemen. Like <laughs> beta males, those fucking beta beta cavemen. <laughs> we, we just, if like if you just put me back into caveman times, I would last maybe a day. You know? 
Why? I wouldn't speak the language. What I wouldn't. I'd be like, eat. I'd be like, eat. eat. Uh, you know, I'd just be saying things like, my phone dead. Phone's dead. You're making me want to watch Encino Man. I could catch you up on everything, but it's dead. <laughs> oh, I really don't. I'd be the worst person to go back and they'd be like, oh my God, teach us everything from the future. And I would have, I don't even know if I could fucking show them a sailor's knot. You'd have $18 yeah. an hour skills to show them. Names of cavemen. <laughs> <laughs> what would they be called? Um, <laughs> if one of them is Brad. I'm gonna lose my shit. Brad, Kyle, Jay Jason, Kyle. What are some cavemen? <laughs> oh, it, they're just like it's just Cro Magnon and Cro Magnon and Homo sapien. No, no, no. I want like fucking actual caveman baby what names. Did, did cavemen have names to identify themselves even, or did they just grunt at each other? Were well, were they ever able to write anything down? I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, they wrote on the walls. In those hieroglyphic things. Did Neanderthals and early humans have names? It is suggested language was present was present a hundred thousand years ago. <clears throat> I personally think names existed at this time or slightly before a fully developed language. Dolphins have unique calls for individuals. So like humans probably had little calls. Yeah, like little calls. Like, huh. It's like a sound. <clears throat> so you Although be, a name oh. is really literally. I know this sounds weird, but a name is actually just a sound. Yeah, unless like sha. I can't, that's all. Sha. So I'd be sha. Yeah. And you'd be j j j. Yeah. You'd be ka 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 ka. <laughs> I'd be ka ka. Great. Ka. <laughs> and if your mom was really mad. She'd be like Kathleen McGee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But most of the time, you just be ka 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 ka. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that had to fucking happen. <laughs> no, you don't have to worry about comedy. Comedy's coming back. Dance studios are going to open up. Everybody's going to flock to local. They're going to get out of those big yeah. chains. You know what I mean? That's what we're going to do. We're going to change the fucking world. Actually, no. We're going to do the same fucking thing we always did. We're going to go to BPs and Walmart and all the millionaire places. And we're going to fucking go to the shawarma shop once every <laughs> two years. You know, go to the local grocery. You know what I mean? We're going to do the same shit. This should have been the biggest lesson that we could have possibly fucking learned as a society and as consumers and we have i don't think we've learned a fucking thing no i didn't save any money and i didn't learn a fucking thing <laughs> not one you know, thing I yeah well, I i'm mean, still gonna go back to I mean, had, like we could I, we both could have been like realtors that were kind of getting our shit together by now yeah you know? <laughs> we definitely could have the first few months would have been lean and then we would have been like okay things are coming back and now we got our Kathleen's got her fucking power suit and I've got my little I've got my skinny tie. <laughs> and we're dressing up our I would have to do it with somebody else. There's no way that I could just be like a realtor by myself. No, I'd need to be on a realtor team, but only with I could do it with you and not too many people though. <laughs> but how much we'd have to you'd with. have to know a lot, you know, because you're you'd be negotiating with other realtors. So they'd be fucking taking you to the woodshed. Like, you know, you're like, well, we'll, we'll sell it for two. What were they going to do to you in the woodshed? Well, they're going to fucking overcharge you for the woodshed. They're going to, you know, like every single thing you're going to be like, we sold for, uh, you're going to go to your client and say, we sold for 240. That's where we landed. And then they'll be like, we wanted 280. What the fuck? Like, and you're just going to be like, sorry, that's the game, you know, like that's all it's going to That's how happen. real estate works. You're going to be pissing people off every week because every person's going to be like, my house is worth 320. And you're going to be like, let's throw it on the market for 290. And they'll be like, you fat bitch. <laughs> you old bearded fuck. My house is worth 320. Like people are just going to hate us. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be 
advertisers as you fat bitch and that is that you, what were you the bearded man you old fat bearded bitch man and the, the old bearded guy <laughs> <laughs> can you be the fat bitch and i can be the old bearded guy <laughs> okay let's do it <laughs> i think i think it would be fun to just like be real estate agents and but but like be like sitcom real estate agents. You know, we'd have fun. That we shenanigans every week. Yeah, no. We learn something new. No one would care about the closing price. Yeah, people would just be excited and happy, and everybody. Yeah, be like the one. Yeah, like the ones on TV on when they're like, "Okay, I'm going to show you three beautiful properties near the beach, two bedrooms, blah blah blah." And you choose. Yeah, we're going to be. We'll start out with small with trailers mostly in North Edmonton. <laughs> Just show up three different trailers. Yeah. I think we're going to get the one where the toilet actually romper. flushes. I'm the fat bitch of real estate, and I specialize in moving people out of double wides and into <laughs> small bungalows. <laughs> because I'm not, great at knowing, I'm not great at knowing prices, and the mistakes I make with trailers <laughs> don't seem that outrageous. We specialize in the trailer to home position yeah that's what we're all trailer about to bungalow we're all about out of trailers and into dilapidated asbestos riddled 1000 square foot bungalows in a bad part of town whenever you talk badly about a trailer somebody will always be like oh they they're really nice nowadays they're really like they get real they up and ornery it. about it <laughs> no you people that own trailers take really good care of their front yards like if you go through a trailer park a lot of them have like beautifully manicured lawns and flower beds like they take it pretty seriously oh yeah absolutely i think it'd be fine to live in a trailer park yeah that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd be fucking we should, clean. <laughs> we should move and do a trailer park. Yeah, my family, you and Adam and the dogs. Be great. <laughs> into one trailer. Not even a double wide, just two bedrooms. <laughs> one bathroom. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be awful. Three cat litter boxes. That'd be awful. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Well, what kind to, of cat litter do you use? I don't fucking. You have to go. I don't even. I, it's like some kind of shitty. Um, I don't know. I get I get small bags. That's the only thing I know about it. Is I get the small bags. I'm not carrying a giant bag of litter in the house. It's for that's for people who, you know, that's for the people who <laughs> love the cats. <laughs> Is it like the little clumping litter box stuff or the yeah, little um, beads? No, it's not the bead. That's gross. The beads, isn't that gross? What do you get? I don't use the beads. I use I use like little wood pellets. When they pee on it, it turns into sawdust. It doesn't smell as bad. It's really good. Wow. So that maybe should be the <laughs> our, what our podcast is going forward. Dead baby bear, cat talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that can be something we do. We have kitty sponsored by Northern Queen. Kitty cat corner. <laughs> Where you talk about like toys and cat trees and types of clumping litter that are the best for the environment. When to go to the vet for a limp. <laughs> How long do you let a cat limp before you go to the vet? Just cat talk? Six months. <laughs> a good six months. A good six months. I have to go and do like a zoom meeting with my for my kids hockey oh tonight right after right now yeah they're allowed to go back <laughs> on the ice thank god finally some fucking freedom freedom <laughs> uh, to practice right they're allowed to go on the ice but they have to be like socially distanced and so they have oh, yeah. to, they do like they have to be like six feet apart like it's just yeah i don't know we'll see how it goes so, so hockey is now going to be just spaced out no contact passing the people that are good with puck handling and stick stuff are going to be the next superstars yeah stick stuff is on ice butt stuff if they're good, <laughs> they're I'm really good at stick stuff <laughs> he's, so good stick stuff. he's actually pretty good with stick <laughs> stuff 
I forgot to scratch it to get downstairs, so I'll scratch it and put it on social media. <laughs> Let her reclaim her loss. Lose. I should be eating these apples before the shows because I just, they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> they always work that for was me. Perfect timing. That was so good. <laughs> you were in the deadest spot. <laughs> yeah, that I in froze your again. Home. Yeah. No, it's good though. If you take an edible at the start and people can see you're fucked up by the end, that's yeah. good advertising. They know, they know it works. That's the best advertising. That's what they said that it works. So, Dad, the product from Northern Queen works and they're on Facebook and <laughs> it's great. Now Sean has to go be on a Zoom meeting with hockey dads. Yep. Am I again? Don't do edibles around kids. <laughs> um, Jim, have a fun weekend. Where are you going? I'm going to Marmot. Oh, nice. <laughs> we yeah, should be good. Got some Northern Queen edibles to to take me down the Tied hill. Tied you over. Yeah. Tied you over. Nice. All right. Sounds good. Okay, so that's gonna be. The password tied you over for this week's 15% discount. Tied you over. <laughs> we should just make it tied you thing, over. Didn't we? If we change it every week, people that are stoners will get confused. Yeah. And we should also <laughs> we should also just put it online so people don't have to actually listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> We're hurting Northern Queen's business. <laughs> yeah. Save it till the end. I think that, I think they got one person. <laughs> Which is better nice. than most of them. Did Ken Tilly get a new client from us? No. But in the Maybe. first week, did they say, did they say did. one? Did they say they made one sale out of it? Well, at least one. I think she did more, but like she's like one person was like, yeah, yeah, I look at the dead baby bear. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think even if people just say I listen to dead baby bear when they order, I'm sure that they'll be like, here's your deal. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that without asking. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, they were gonna be like, make it a really embarrassing code word. That's the key. So they have to say something. Embarrassing. Password is penis. Yeah. Okay. Penis touchy. <laughs> penis touchy. Penis touch. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a fun one. <laughs> All right. Great I'll... podcast, you fucking idiots. <laughs> I won't sit in this corner ever again. No, that's the worst corner you could be in. <laughs>